Hello, welcome to Movie Summaries. Today we are summarizing a 2019 horror and thriller movie called I See You. Fair warning, there are spoilers in the summary. Enjoy, and be sure to subscribe to watch more videos weekly, and hit like. The movie begins with a 12-year-old kid, Justin Witter, biking. As he rides his bike through the woods, an invisible force grabs him from behind. He's later reported missing. The movie then cuts to the home of Detective Greg Harper. The Harper family is going through a rough time, because not long ago, Jackie was caught cheating on Greg with her high school sweetheart. Jackie regrets walking out on her family, and leaves no stone unturned to make amends. Jackie even makes delicious pancakes for Connor, but he insists on eating dry cereal for breakfast. Jackie notices that her favorite sunflower mug is missing, and asks Connor about it, but he doesn't know anything about it. After Jackie leaves for work, Connor complains about his mom, but Greg tells him to stay out of grown folks' business. Greg asks Connor about the bruise on his face. He got into a fight with two guys from school. Connor's cop father doesn't approve of his behavior explicitly, but he gives him a silent approval. After Connor leaves for school, Greg notices that one of their family pictures is missing from its frame. He receives a call from Jackie, and she tries to act all lovey-dovey with him, but he hangs up the phone and hurls it out of the window in anger. Can you blame him, though? He instantly regrets his actions. In the process, he notices Jackie's favorite mug on the roof. He goes over to the guest room upstairs to bring the mug back and find cigarette butts in it. It surprises him, as Connor doesn't smoke. I mean, teenagers know how to hide a thing or two from their parents. At work, Lieutenant Mariah Davis assigns Greg and his longtime partner, Ray Spitsky, to investigate the disappearances of a boy named Michael King and Justin Witter. At the crime scene, the detectives discover a green pocket knife, like those used by Cole Gordon, a serial killer and abductor. This concerns Spitsky because he sent Cole Gordon off to prison on suspicion of killing six other boys 15 years ago. This means Cole Gordon could have been wrongly accused of being serial killer. Jackie returns home early from work and is surprised to find her silverware set missing from the kitchen. She also notices loud noises coming from upstairs. Upon investigating, she finds a repairman in her room. He reveals that Greg called him to repair the broken window. The man reveals that her daughter let him in the house, noting that she has been brought up so well to be polite and kind. Wait, what? A daughter? Does Greg have a daughter that Jackie doesn't know of? She puts it on the back burner for a while and cooks a fancy dinner for Connor and herself, but the dinner only makes Connor more upset. After Greg returns home, Jackie tells him about the repairman and the missing silverware, but Greg brushes her concerns aside. More strange activity begins to happen around the house. The TV begins to automatically turn on and off. Moreover, more pictures begin to disappear from the picture frames by the stairs. Greg notices some of these activities, but doesn't think much of it. He also starts taking Jackie's sleeping pills. While taking the pills, Greg notices Connor's pet mouse out of its cage. He follows the mouse into Connor's closet, but someone locks him inside with the mouse. Greg immediately suspects Connor and yells at him to open the door. After hooting and hollering for a while, Jackie hears his call and frees him. Jackie reveals that Connor is not at home, which surprises Greg and he attributes the strange occurrence to fatigue. Jackie suggests he sleep in the bedroom with her. This only prompts Greg to ask her if she really wanted to get married with him in the first place. It is revealed that Jackie's parents never approved of Greg, because he was an out-of-towner with the shitty cop salary that couldn't take care of their daughter. Greg asks Jackie if she would have married him if he had not gotten her pregnant, but Jackie doesn't give him a straight answer and tells him that she is happy about the way things have turned out. Greg sleeps in the guest room, and someone pulls down Greg's blanket. The next day, when Greg wakes up, he notices that his bed is wet. Embarrassed, Greg quietly puts his blanket and covers in the washing machine and goes to work. At the police station, Lieutenant Mariah Davis reveals that Cole Gordon's defense attorney learned about the modus operandi of the abductor of Justin Witter and is trying to build a case for mistrial. Lieutenant Mariah reveals that she has sent out a team to get in touch with the two boys that escaped from the captivity of their abductor 15 years ago. Spitz argues that he has already interviewed the two boys extensively when it happened, but Mariah orders them to talk to the boys again. It is revealed that Alec is locked away in a prison, while Braun lives with his parents. Braun, for some reason, panics when he sees Spitz and Greg approaching him. After the adult Braun proves to be of no help, Greg goes through the old interview of a young Tommy Braun. In the tape, young Braun reveals that he disfigured his face himself after he ran away from the little house in the woods where he was held captive. Tommy says that it's a magic house that disappears. Spitsky asks what that means, and Tommy says that it means that Spitsky will never find the man. Later that day, Jackie's fling, Todd, shows up at her door unannounced. 
He really has got a lot of nerve showing up at Greg's home. Jackie panics and tells him to go away, but Todd refuses to listen. He tells her how much he loves and wants to be with her. Suddenly, something drops on Todd's head. Jackie notices that it is her favorite sunflower mug that had gone missing. She also notices the open window of the guest room and immediately suspects Connor and takes him into the garage. Suddenly, music starts playing from the living room. She goes to turn it off and runs into Connor. She asks him if he was on the roof, but he claims he doesn't know what she is talking about. Jackie decides not to push him and takes Connor to school. At the home, someone attacks Todd from behind. The movie then cuts to the crime scene, where Spitz and Greg notice a thin metal wire tied from a tree. It turns out, Justin was knocked off from his bike by the wire. Jackie finds Todd's dead body after returning home, fearing that Connor will be held responsible because of the mug. She presumed he threw. Jackie convinces Greg to help her bury Todd's body in the woods after Greg returns home. They head off into the woods with Todd's body as Connor returns home. At home, he finds the missing silverware in the washing machine. He shrugs it off. Suddenly, he receives a strange message, asking him if he knows what frogging is. Connor immediately looks it up on the internet and learns that it is an act of squatting inside other people's homes without their knowledge. A guy appears behind Connor wearing a frog mask. Meanwhile, Jackie somewhat reconciles with Greg while burying her side boo. When they return home, Jackie and Greg find Connor bound and gagged in the bathtub with a green pocket knife stuck into a bar of soap beside him, similar to the one used by the serial child abductor. They quickly free Connor, and Jackie rushes him to the hospital. Greg looks for the culprit in the house and in the attic. He finds the pictures that were missing from the frame by the stairs. Suddenly, the music begins to play downstairs, and Greg goes to investigate. Someone appears from behind and charges at Greg with an axe. The movie then flashes back to the past. Greg is seen leaving for work, and a teenage girl named Mindy and a boy named Alec are seen sneaking into Greg's home through an open garage door with a camera. Mindy is a pro at frogging, and she is showing her friend Alec how to frog without getting caught. They are recording their entire experience. They are amazed by the property and decide to make the guest bedroom their headquarters. They also plan to use the attic to hide from the Harpers during the day. Although Mindy insists on drawing no attention to themselves while hiding in the house, Alec begins mentally messing with the Harpers by removing photographs from their frames, turning on televisions, and urinating on Greg while he sleeps. Is Alec just sick in the head, or does he have a legitimate reason to hate the Harpers? It turns out, Mindy is the daughter that let the window repairman into the house. It is revealed that Mindy was initially unaware of Alec's shenanigans, because he spiked her water with the powder of Jackie's sleeping pills. Mindy only found out about his lunacy when she spotted him smoking on the roof one morning and dropped the mug on Todd's head. She calls him back inside and decides to immediately vacate the property. However, she has hidden her bag in the garage, so Alec creates a distraction by playing music while Mindy goes to fetch the bag. In the garage, she notices an injured Todd and quickly hides. From her hiding spot, Mindy silently witnesses Greg murder Todd by hitting him in the head from behind with a bat. Greg then immediately hides the bat in his car and leaves with Spitz in the police car. Mindy is shaken by the ordeal, but Jackie returns home, forcing Mindy to hide. Jackie finds Todd dead from a head wound. Mindy witnesses Greg pretending like he didn't kill Todd. After Greg and Jackie finally leave to get rid of Todd's body, Mindy finally goes upstairs to get Alec, but she catches him doing God knows what to poor Connor. Horrified, Mindy expresses her terror at the psychotic person Alec has become. A struggle ensues between Mindy and Alec. Mindy hits her head and falls unconscious. Alec puts Mindy in the back of Greg's vehicle, but has trouble getting the vehicle to start. Greg and Jackie return home from burying Todd's body, forcing Alec to hide after Jackie discovers Connor tied up in the bathroom. Greg sends her to the hospital with him and heads off somewhere on his own car. Alec is still hiding in the garage and is horrified to see Greg drive away with Mindy still unconscious in the back. Mindy quietly gains consciousness in the back of the vehicle, where she notices Justin Witter's jersey in Greg's bag. The jersey and other evidence makes Mindy realize that Greg is the one abducting and killing boys, and I was under the impression that Alec is the worst. Greg drives the car to the middle of the woods, and after he leaves the car, Mindy gets out and calls 911. She tells them about the killer, but before she could explain where she is, the call disconnects. Before she could panic, she notices a lit trailer in the woods. Inside, she finds Michael King and Justin Witter imprisoned by Greg. The boys tell her that Greg said he is going to kill them. They beg Mindy to free them. As she tries to free them, Greg comes up from behind her and suffocates her with a plastic bag. Greg finds Mindy's camcorder, documenting all of the frogging she and Alec did inside the Harper house. Enraged, Greg heads home to hunt for Alec, taking Mindy. When Greg arrives home, he takes Mindy in the living room 
tells her to stand up and shoots her with a service pistol. He takes a second handgun from his pocket, turns, and shoots two holes in the wall. He then wipes his fingerprints from the second gun and places it in Mindy's hand to make it appear as though Mindy shot at him. What a snake. With the service pistol in hand, he begins searching the house for Alec. Alec hears the shots and takes an axe from the wall of the garage. He sneaks through the house and finds Mindy's dead body. Greg is upstairs hunting for Alec. Alec lures him downstairs by playing a song on the record player. As Greg goes to turn off the record player, Alec attacks him with an axe. The movie then cuts back to the present. Greg overpowers Alec and knocks him out before going to the kitchen sink and stabbing himself with a knife to make himself look like the victim. However, when he turns to plant the knife on Alec and sees that he has disappeared, he hears a hammer cough and sees Alec pointing a gun at him. Alec tells Greg that he knows what he is. Greg explains that he will stage the scene to frame Alec and Mindy as the murderers. Alec steps forward in the light and Greg recognizes him and suddenly becomes frightened. Greg pleads with Alec and tells him that he was abused as a child. But, unmoved by Greg's plea, Alec shoots him dead, just as the cops arrive. A crying Alec stares down at Greg's body. Spitsky breaks into the house and sees Greg lying dead on the kitchen floor. He fires a bullet into Alec. Critically wounded, Alec lifts his head and recognizes Spitsky. He whispers Spitsky's name. It turns out that Alec was Greg's other victim that escaped with Tommy Braun. Alec is Alec Tavers and Tommy Braun's friend. Alec orchestrated the frogging scheme to take revenge on the man that tortured him and Tommy as children. The police rescued the two captive boys in the woods, while Spitsky finds the evidence in the back of Greg's SUV. That proves that his partner was the perpetrator. Jackie and Connor return home, shocked to see their yard filled with police cars. Jackie walks towards Spitsky, who says something inaudible to her. She brushes past him and stares in silence at the evidence in the back of Greg's SUV. As Alec is wheeled to the ambulance, he flashes back to himself and Tommy's young boys. They encounter Greg, who gives Alec a green pocket knife. What an ending, right? Hope you enjoyed our summary. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos weekly. Thanks.